You know, I couldn't find anything more magic or mystical than to be deep in a forest in Ireland, among the trees. And there's nowhere more perfect to find them than here in Killarney National Park. The beautiful forests of Killarney have lorded over the landscape since the last ice age, 10,000 years ago. Most of the country once lay under a blanket of trees like this. But over time, we harvested our forests without replanting until Ireland's forest cover was reduced to just 1%. Only recently have we come to understand how this destruction has endangered life on Earth. Aren't they beauties? But what's easy to forget is without trees, we just simply couldn't survive. They sit there silent, but in fact they're busily regulating Earth's temperature and climate and making the atmosphere just perfect for all species to survive. Without trees, we could not survive. And yet, despite their importance to our survival, humans cut down 36 football fields worth of trees every single minute. Throughout the world, environmental campaigners and UN climate change groups are fighting deforestation and advocating a more sustainable approach. Meanwhile, NASA scientists have tracked the emissions of CO2 across the Northern Hemisphere with shocking results. More trees will help soak up some of this carbon dioxide and mitigate climate change. And we here in Ireland can play our part. For some reason, Despite their importance, we in Ireland have been dragging our heels when it comes to planting more forests. I want to discover what impacts growing more trees could have for us in Ireland and find out what's holding us back. Forests are magical places. Memories of childhood, fairies, goblins, ancient mythology. I think all of us instinctively feel the power of trees. In recent years, science has revealed that trees have an even greater power than we had imagined. Silver culturist Niall Farrelly has come to the Sleeveboom Mountains to explain. Hi, Niall. Hi, Duncan. Grant, how are you keeping? Hope we're not disturbing you there, you look busy. No, What um, exactly are you doing with this instrument? I'm measuring these trees here, Duncan, to get an estimate of the volume and then the biomass in the trees. Are you hugging the tree? I am, I'm trying to get around it. It's, it's quite large and I have to need to get this tape around. If you can help me there. I can, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. and we'll bring this uh, tape around and we can see that the diameter on this tree is 50 centimetres. Diameter is a very important uh, um, measurement to take in trees and so is height. You know, with height and diameter, we can calculate the volume of trees. And uh, here we can calculate the volume of the forest. And the volume then is proportional to the amount of carbon stored in it. And if you look around us here, we have probably a thousand tons of CO2 it's stored in one hectare of this forest. Yes. Taken out of the atmosphere over the life yeah. of the trees. Effectively, this forest is really, a, is really a carbon factory. It's taken carbon dioxide out from the atmosphere and it's storing it in the trees here. As right. Well. When trees are young and growing fast, they soak up large amounts of carbon dioxide. Decades later, as they reach their old age, their capacity to consume carbon is dramatically reduced. So careful management is essential if trees are to perform the task of carbon sequestration to its optimum. Foresters like Nile are masters of the art of silviculture, it's the science of managing a forest, harvesting trees at the peak of their cycle, thinning trees to allow others mature more successfully, and planting young saplings to start the cycle all over again. When performed correctly, a well-managed forest can positively improve climate change for centuries. 
So the advantage about all this uh, carbon uh, storage in forests is that it replaces um, fossil fuels. And, you know, uh, if timber can be utilised in buildings and, you know, timber frames, it replaces uh, uh, concrete and other uh, intensive carbon uh, products. When we use timber to build structures like houses and offices, all that carbon the tree absorbed in its life remains safely absorbed in the structure. Timber is also dramatically less carbon intensive than steel, cement or brick. And the role that trees perform in fighting climate change need not end there. To manage a sustainable forest, thinning is harvested at regular intervals. That thinning can be an important renewable source of energy for Ireland. For 25 years, Astellas, a global pharmaceutical company, has been busy producing medical products on the outskirts of Kilorgolan. With over 300 staff, Astellas produces medical products that can literally mean the difference between life and death. We're making immunosuppressor for transplant patients. And so a transplant patient has to take immunosuppressor so that they don't reject the organ that they've taken. Okay, and do these go all over the world? All over the world. Three years ago, Astellas made a radical decision. Colm Timmons, the engineering facilities manager, has invited me to see it. Robot, so, is it? Yeah, it's a, it's a robot crane. A state-of-the-art 1.8 megawatt boiler. What is particularly amazing about the boiler is that it runs entirely on wood energy. Every day, the robot lifts 10 tonnes of wood chip into the boiler generating the vast quantity of heat that the factory requires. This is where we actually burn the wood chip. Oh, wow. So the wood chip feeds through from the front end of the boiler, and as it burns, fly ash is actually captured by two filtration systems and then captured later on. Right, so where does that get captured? OK. The fly ash that we collect is, is only goes into this bin. You can see by the size of the boiler and the size of the filters that we have. It's, it's tiny. And that's, of course, potash could go straight on to Go straight to compost, absolutely. Nothing else in it. Yeah. Fantastic. All of the wood chip that we actually burn here in our boiler comes from these forests through that depot. Is it important before you put in this boiler that you knew you had this resource? Absolutely. We needed to know that we had a consistent supply. But we were also very interested in the fact that what we spend on thermal energy goes back into our local community and also perhaps creates as many jobs as possible as a result. Until recently, Astella spent over a half a million euro a year on oil. Now, the money they spend on fuels stays here, circulating in the local economy. So Duncan, this is where we test our wood chip. We take a sample of it as it comes in and we test it for moisture content. We weigh 500 grams of it and we burn off all the moisture content in it and re-weigh it to determine its moisture content. And then on that basis, we know how much energy we're actually buying. Because we don't actually pay for wood chip quantity, we, we pay for wood chip energy. The installation of a biomass heating system has helped Astellas secure major contracts from international clients who prioritise companies that have world-class environmental credentials in the companies they partner with. So I believe you were on oil heating before this. How much did you use? We were burning approximately 700,000 litres of oil annually. 700,000? Yes. That's an awful lot of oil. Absolutely. That's and a lot of money. An awful lot of CO2 associated with it as well. Since changing over to biomass, Having previously burned oil to produce thermal energy, we've, we've reduced our CO2 emissions by 92%. Wow. Is this a, a viable thing for other industries to do? Well, what I can tell you, Duncan, is that our overall cost of, of manufacturing has been reduced as part of our renewable and energy philosophies over the past few years. And it's helped secure our sustainability. And it's definitely a key factor in our competitive position. What I found here makes me ask, if Astellas can do it, why more of us aren't doing the same? In Ireland, we only generate 2% of our heating from renewable sources. Part of the problem has been the supply chain, but in Kilorglan, they've found a way to guarantee a sustainable quality supply. 
The key is building a network of local fuel depots that gather wood from local fires and deliver the processed chip to local businesses. I travel north to Donegal to visit one. This old quarry just outside the town of Lifford makes an ideal storage and drying space for timber. Ecowood was established 10 years ago by its partners Paul McGonagall and Malachy McCann and has been an outstanding success. Now this is all thinning now, is it Paul? Yeah, it is indeed, yeah, it's all thinning from local forest. It's probably only about 30 kilometre radius. Yes, yeah, this is incredible, but how much wood have you got here? At, at the moment we have approximately 10,000 cubic metres of timber in, in the yard here. Wow! Moment, so it's probably the equivalent, you know, it's, it's difficult to gauge, but it's probably equivalent to about a quarter million trees. I'm always on a journey to find out how we can reduce the amount of oil use in Ireland. What will this do to reduce oil? Well, over the course of the next 12 months, we'll displace 3 million litres of, of heavy oil so we'll go, uh, from this depot here alone. Considering the average price of heating oil, a depot like this can keep up to 3 million euro a year in the local economy. And who are your main customers now for this? Uh, customers are regionally based. We have a lot locally here in, in the Donegal region. Uh, we have a lot of leisure industry, hotel industry. Uh, leisure centres. We've also got some small industrial customers as well. And why are they going for wood instead of oil? What's driving them off oil? Uh, ultimately, the economics of it, uh, to a large extent. And there is the environmental issue as well, but um, we, they're, they're seeing significant savings, typically 50% in the hotel industry, 40 to 50% savings. It's having a fairly significant impact locally with the jobs that we've created. I think it's having a very significant local economic benefit, as well as the environmental benefit. And I can see that expanding, and I don't see any reason why it couldn't be uh, replicated regionally throughout the entire country. As the chip rains in heaps, it reminds me of oil pumping from the ground. The difference is that this is Irish, sustainable and renewable. I've got to admit, it seems crazy that we don't take more advantage of this natural resource. So why don't we? It's a question I'm going to put to one of Ireland's biomass experts, Des O'Toole. Des, this is wonderful fuel, isn't it? But well, why haven't we got more of this in Ireland? Why are we not using it so much? Well, Duncan, Ireland has an over-reliance on imported fossil fuel, and we have this local resource. It's from our, from our local forestry. It supports local jobs, local industries, reduces energy costs, displaces fossil fuel. It's, it's illogical why the market hasn't, hasn't grown like it should. So nationally, what's the situation? How much are we using it in our homes and our other buildings? It's Roughly. probably in around 2%. Yeah. Yeah. So 98% is imported, it's fossil, imported fuel. fossil fuel. Why have we become so addicted to oil for heating in Ireland? Well, oil traditionally has been relatively cheap. And I suppose companies invested in, in boilers at the time, you know, it made sense at the time. But now there's a, a cheaper alternative. It's local. It displaces that imported fossil fuel. And it, it saves energy for these companies, you know, makes them more competitive in their sector. And so what is Quinta doing for this? To to kind of bring more biomass onto the market? Well, we're supporting depots and, and we have a number of depots, regional hubs around the country that supply wood chip, just like this one here in County Donegal. Each depot is doing 10, 15,000 tonnes and every tonne that goes out the gate is, is produced locally from our local forests and is, is displacing imported fossil fuel. When you think of 7 billion leaves our economy every year in imports of oil, gas and coal, yeah. you look at the, all of the advantages of this, you know, not just the reduction in import of fuel or the carbon local reductions, but the local economy really, yeah. benefits are massive, you know? Every year we spend billions importing fossil fuel. By switching to home-produced energy, all of that money could instead enrich families up and down the country. Like those of the timbermen who harvest the thinning for eco-wood. Hi guys, great to see you. Lovely day up here in the forest in Donegal, isn't it? Lovely Donegal weather, yeah. Yeah. I started back in the 70s and my father worked back in the early 60s. Right, that's my son Ryan here. Ryan, hi, yeah. hi Ryan. Tony, that's my name. Tony, and who's, what's your name? Kevin. Kevin. Kevin, that's his son Adrian. Oh, you have a son too, so it's basically father, son, two lots. Yeah. Yeah? My both grandparents worked in the forestry generation before, like. 
Right, so it really yeah. goes back three generations. Three generations. Uh, no one else done anything I've done in my life. And would you guys now, younger generation here, would you like to see your family working in the forest? I'd love to see my, my, my sons coming, up, coming through to this. And there's a great livelihood like them. So if there wasn't any work in the forest, if these trees weren't being cut down, or if there wasn't a use for wood energy, for example, or for wood, what would happen to you guys? I would say maybe in England or America or somewhere, I don't know. Is that what you feel, guys? Uh, Australia, I would say, more than likely. The young guys, like you guys, like... Yeah. Probably Australia, more than likely. Yeah. I'm genuinely moved to hear that three generations have earned their living here planting and harvesting trees. Their families, and many more like them, could be guaranteed work for centuries. If we had a more strategic policy for wood energy. Are we missing a huge opportunity here? We could have so many more people like Tony, Adrian, Kevin and Ryan, all earning good livelihoods across Ireland. But instead, we're giving away our hard-earned money to Russia and Saudi Arabia for imports of oil, gas and coal. Is this really wise? Ireland's wood energy policy is confused. With 445,000 hectares of forest under management, one state body, Quilsha, are geared up to provide the nation with fuel from their mature forests. Meanwhile, other state bodies spend 300 million euro every year importing oil and gas to heat our schools, hospitals and state buildings. It's madness. Something's preventing the Irish state from switching to wood energy. I cross the country to Navan and step into the embrace of another beautiful forest. Planted 10 years ago by John Sherlock and his father, this young wood has already gained a mysterious majesty. And this, this now, to see this come and this crop growing, as you can see there, Duncan, you have the hard woods, you have the soft woods, you have a lovely, lovely oak plantation there coming. At the back of that then, we have a Sitka spruce, we have Norway spruce, but the beauty of this is that we have the hardwoods at the front. So no matter what's taking place as regards harvesting, you're gonna have a lovely, stra lovely yeah, stretch of oak there. And these oak are only, what, 10, 11 years old? 11 years old, yeah. Right, fantastic. That. That's great growth here. The oak, you and me will never see them harvested, and maybe my grandchildren will see them harvested, but I'm not really concerned about that because I think if this oak grows in 70 years time, imagine the crop that'll be here. Imagine what this will look like. John is one of the 16,000 landowners who've chosen to plant trees. Substantial grants are available to landowners to switch to forestry. In some cases, more than they could earn from farming. But many remain reluctant to switch because they fear that there's no guaranteed market for the final product. Working with local growers, John supplies logs for biomass home stoves. It's terrific to see that a healthy market now exists for logs. Because so many homes have replaced their traditional fireplaces with much more efficient stoves. But what I want to know is why there are still over one million home boilers in Ireland that use oil to create heat, and yet only a few thousand boilers that use wood. I'm hoping Noel Gavigan who's devoted his career okay. to the subject, can explain. We really have big issues with energy in Ireland. Look at our heat energy, 2% of renewable energy in our homes. Why are we so slow when we've got such incredible resources in our land? We have a particular issue at the moment, and that is the state currently grant aids the installation of oil and gas boilers. Now, to be honest with you, it's very difficult to understand why the state would grant aid those sorts of boilers while not giving the same grant aid to, to other boilers. And this is taxpayers' money going into oil boilers. Is that what you're saying? Yes, it's taxpayers' money going into oil boilers. And not only is, is it the initial uh, money going into these oil boilers, we're then tying those people that buy those oil boilers into buying oil for the next 20 years, which is all imported. There is always that question as to why government seems to be supporting an industry which is, generates very little uh, employment in this country, generates very little economic activity, and is also completely against our commitments under um, 
reducing our carbon footprint. So it, there is questions there. There's also the issue of energy security. We, we can see from the past 12 months how unstable the, the world can suddenly become. And we are reliant, our entire way of living is reliant on importing fuels from halfway around the world from places that are quite unstable. So unless we are going to um, embrace this, we could be setting ourselves up for a, a disaster which will make the last couple of years look pale and insignificant. You know, what I find about the whole biomass and what excites me about the whole biomass thing for heating in Ireland is it's a no-brainer. We have local product, we have energy. It's like having oil in the ground and we don't want to set up a refinery to refine it. We have the product. We only have to mobilise it and get it to its end user. And it's good for the, for the environment. So why can't we see what's standing in front of our faces? There are so many ways that growing more forests can help us in the battle against climate change. Over their growing life, trees sequester carbon dioxide and store it safely in their timber. When trees mature, they must be harvested so that new saplings can start the process all over again. By using harvested timber locally to build new structures, all the CO2 stored in the timber can be locked away for many years. Better still, using timber in construction also replaces carbon-intensive materials like concrete, steel and PVC. And when that timber eventually reaches the end of its use, it can be recycled or used for energy. If we're serious about replacing our 98% use of fossil fuel for heating our homes, a renewable heat incentive for householders is essential. Similarly, installing district heating systems in our towns and cities will encourage local farmers to plant more forests and process wood fuel from thinning. I've no doubt that we can make forestry a major part of Ireland's response to climate change. Underpinning my optimism is the perspective of Irish children. Travelling across the country, I've heard of some kids who've won an award for an energy business they have set up. I decide to end my journey by visiting them in Bally Buffet. I believe there's children here with a very good project. They're Brilliant. selling something the here. National School, the children won the award yesterday. Where are they? Great. Hello. Hello. I believe you've won a fantastic prize. Yes. yes. What is it? A young entrepreneurs competition. Young entrepreneurs. Yeah, Lily's mum was uh, like trying to start the fire and she didn't have any coal left. And then Lily came up with the idea of the log. So what's this made of? It's made of shredded paper and wood shavings. You put the boiling water with the wood shavings and the shredded paper into this machine and you can press it and you make it into that block and then you dry it for two days. Yeah. And does it burn well, by the way? Yeah, yeah. yeah. for an hour. Half an hour. Really? It seems cool. Now, can I buy some of these? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. how much? 50 cents. We nearly sold yeah. all out. We only have two blocks left because... Now, I've only got two euros. Well, you can take these mm -hmm. three. Are you going to go into business with this? Yeah. 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 Are you going to sell these all yeah. over the country? Yeah. yeah. Have to put it into boiling water. Though I can't help feeling I should have haggled more. I'm glad to have encountered such shrewd entrepreneurs. It's wonderful that the next generation sees the business potential of wood energy. Comes up to this. People interested in biofuel can get free practical information from woodenergy.ie, a website that offers impartial advice. The world needs more trees. For us in Ireland, increasing the amount of wood we use for heat generation and construction will make a dramatic impact on our environment, on our air quality, on our health, and ultimately that of the world we inhabit. The more trees we have, the deeper this planet will breathe and the slower it will warm. There seems to be a massive lack of vision, leadership and joined up thinking here in Ireland. Our policymakers need to challenge the fossil fuel industry, not bend to it. They need to work together with all those interesting people around the country so that Ireland can find itself with many more of these mighty trees. Wouldn't that be great?